There are many films about revenge, but most of them have predictable plots and are too mainstream. Unlike other films, this one has an unpredictable storyline. A young man must learn martial arts for a revenge mission he has harbored since childhood, but even after mastering martial arts skills, will he be able to carry out his revenge easily? Behind this revenge mission, is there a conspiracy? If you want to dive into a film with the best script writing, it's best not to skip any details in this recap. It begins with a narration about the cruel rule of Queen Hilda van der Kooi. We learn about a dreadful event called the Culling Day, held every year. On this day, Hilda makes a list of names, and if your name is on it, she will hunt you down and kill you. The story shows a young boy and his family falling victim to Hilda's cruelty, with even his sister being killed mercilessly. The narrator is the same boy who says Hilda took everything from him. Now, he wants revenge by becoming the deviliest warrior. He is buried underground, eating stink bugs through a straw. When he gets tired and comes out, his teacher, Shaman, makes him return to the pit and buries him again. The next day, the boy trains with Shaman, who advises him not to be a little boy because they hate suffering and avoid chores. The boy also spends time with his two beetle friends, champions of a beetle fight club, until the Shaman crushes them underfoot. The Shaman is taught him that warriors don't need friends or food. At night, the boy reads the dictionary. He remembers his sister Mina eating frosty puffs for breakfast while their mother was very intense. He doesn't recall much of what happened before the tragedy but remembers Mina well. He recalls how Mina planned their escape to a magical world. He doesn't remember his voice, so he uses a voice from his favorite video game, Super Dragon Punch Force 2. Shaman then gives the boy special drugs that put him in a state called laminal where he is between being asleep and awake. He reveals that his anxiety worsens every time he goes to the market. One day, while he's there, a soldier from Van Der Kooi's army approaches him but he hands the soldier a letter indicating that he can't speak or listen. As he's about to leave, he spots his sister Mina in the crowd and admits that he keeps seeing her everywhere. He flashes back to when Mina led him to Hilda's statue, explaining that Hilda is the cause of all their city's troubles. Mina, fearless, encourages her brother to mock the statue too. Back in the forest, Shaman shapes the boy into a weapon designed to kill Hilda van der Kooi. The boy takes his training seriously, working hard to make Shaman proud. At night, Shaman gives him drugs, making his eyes bubble out, which makes the boy laugh. He trains hard to become a deadly assassin, and even when Shaman beats him, his newer, stronger self helps him get back on his feet, ready to improve in the face of great struggle. The boy fights Shaman fiercely but loses when memories of Mina distract him. He tries to meditate but thoughts of Mina and her potato chips distract him again. He prepares to go to the market, trying to ignore her but failing. Once there, Mina points out a beautiful girl named Anna flirting with him. The boy accepts her flower but van der Kooi soldiers arrive and he rudely returns the flower after Anna says she loves the culling. Glenn van der Kooi then appears. Shaman and the boy watch closely. When the boy sees Gideon van der Kooi, he remembers the day Gideon broke into their house and shot his mother. Glenn takes charge and prepares to read a speech written by Gideon, but he stops, finding it filled with repeated words and detailed descriptions of owls. Glenn proves that no one in the crowd has ever seen an owl, making the speech pointless. He points out a family whose father is against Hilda's rule. As he threatens to kill them, a woman steps up and taunts Glenn for following his wife's orders. Glenn loses his temper and tries to shoot her but misses and hits another man, causing panic. Gideon calls his associate June and orders her to take control. Suddenly, a boy breaks free and tries to attack Glenn, but June protects Glenn and cuts off the boy's arm. As chaos erupts, the boy wants to intervene, but the shaman stops him. Soon, June and her team turn the riot into a massacre. Glenn announces that he needs to take 12 men for a program his wife Melanie van der Kooi has arranged. He orders them to take a kid, but June resists, revealing she takes orders from Hilda. As the van der Kooi soldiers start cleaning up, shaman tells the boy to leave, but he refuses, saying he won't let Hilda kill more people. He runs off, declaring he's on a mission to kill Hilda. He sneaks into one of Glenn's cars, determined to shake the foundation of Hilda's empire tonight. That night, Melanie visits Glenn and Gideon and angrily asks why they brought only men when she needed twelve. Glenn blames Gideon and his speech for the chaos. Gideon then points out that Glenn's actions caused the bludged. Instead of getting mad at Glenn, Melanie says he has been a bad boy and will be a good boy now by hosting her program. The boy overhears their conversation and sees Mina beside him. Suddenly, she starts talking to him, responding to his thoughts. She tells him how much she hated the shaman, and now that the boy has left, she can even scream. She suggests disguises for their stealth mission, but the boy ignores her as he moves forward. Mina appears dressed as a ninja with butterfly wings. She asks him to lead the way, and as she moves ahead, 
The boy sees her about to get hit by a passing lifter. He realizes too late that Mina isn't real and Glenn and his men spot him. The boy takes down a man, and when Mina tells him to hide, he locks her inside a closet to stay focused. He then butchers many van der Koy soldiers. Basho celebrates their win but Glenn opens fire on them. Basho manages to shoot Glenn, and before the boy can kill him Basho stops him saying Glenn might have valuable information. Basho uses a bench vise to threaten Glenn and demands information about Hilda. Glenn terrified blames the van der Koy for turning him into a monster. He mentions his last visit to his therapist and insists he isn't naturally violent. Glenn agrees to lead the boy and Basho to Hilda. However, the bench vise slips from Basho's hands, killing Glenn mercilessly. Afterward, Basho tells the boy about the resistance against Hilda's dynasty, explaining that the van der Koy crushed people's hopes, but he never gave up, which is why he's free. Basho leads the boy to his hideout, where Benny attacks them but Basho calms him down. When asked about the rest of his team, Basho learns they are dead and feels saddened. Meanwhile, the boy tries to lip-read Benny but hears random nonsensical words. The boy comforts Basho who then decides they must attack Hilda, claiming they now have a secret weapon. They plan their attack. Basho explains that Gideon handles the streets while Melanie manages business and PR. June is head of security, and Glenn is now dead. When Benny tries to explain further, he speaks in gibberish, confusing the boy. Suddenly Mina appears and advises the boy to act as if he understands everything. Later, they attack the Van Der Koy mansion, killing several guards. The boy is motivated for the battle but gets confused when he's dressed as a chef and sent into the dining room, unsure what to do. Mina tells him to act like a chef. As they walk around, Mina spots macarons and urges her brother to try one. The boy takes a bite and instantly loves them, getting distracted. Suddenly, Basho reappears and reminds the boy to focus on the mission. Turning around, the boy is startled to see Hilda in front of him. He quickly assigns Mina to collect all the macarons so he can eat them later and prepares for the confrontation. The boy enters the kitchen and kills all the chefs before reaching the dining room where he beheads Hilda. Just as he starts celebrating, Gideon arrives and reveals that he used actors to impersonate the van der Kois. It's not the first time someone has tried to kill them. As Gideon talks to the boy, Graham orders him to kill the boy. Distracted, the boy grabs Gideon's gun, but Gideon warns him about June. Suddenly she appears behind him and orders Gideon and his men to leave. A fierce fight ensues between the boy and June who proves to be a tough opponent. The boy manages to unmask her but as he's about to kill her, Mina distracts him and the boy gets caught. As he falls unconscious, he recalls when Shaman rescued him, cutting his tongue and making him deaf. After the boy recovered, the Shaman told him about his mother and ordered him to avenge her death. The boy also remembers the night he was hung with his family before Shaman killed the guards and saved him. When the boy regains consciousness, he finds June demanding information about Shaman. The boy infuriates her intentionally. Before she loses her temper, Gideon asks for privacy. Once alone, Gideon confides that he is tired of both Hilda and Shaman. He reveals that Hilda has gone psychotic, seeing Shaman everywhere. Sick of the chaos, Gideon wants to end it by killing either Hilda or Shaman. When the boy refuses to give information about Shaman, Gideon considers another approach, but then Melanie arrives. Gideon pretends to be torturing the boy. Melanie gets furious at the boy for killing Glenn as she needs a host for her show and has trained Glenn extensively. She orders the boy to be brought to the studio. On the way, Melanie reveals she has summoned Hilda to address the people, but June objects, calling Hilda unstable. Melanie insists she has maintained her family's honor and terror for years and ignores June's warning. She strictly orders the guards not to give Hilda a gun. The boy is bound inside the studio. After the guards leave, Mina tries to chat, but he ignores her. Soon Hilda arrives on stage and Gideon laughs when she is introduced as a courageous leader. She begins her speech but when she looks at the boy, her heart slows and she slips into her psychotic state. She starts saying things that are not on the teleprompter and imagines Shaman in the crowd. Panic ensues as Hilda takes out her gun but Melanie steps in to save the day. She starts calling immediately, telling the audience that the naughtiest will face Gary, the goat and announces the presence of Captain Frostington. Amid the chaos, the boy remembers that Gideon hid a scalpel in his pocket. Meanwhile, Van der Koy soldiers brutally kill the rebels, including Anna. Mina urges her brother to free himself quickly, and he does just as the soldiers attack him. The boy recalls that he is the instrument of death and rushes toward the battlefield, but Melanie knocks him down using the collar around his neck. When Gary the goat approaches to kill him, he instead knocks down the Van der Koy soldiers. After gaining control of the situation, Basso and Benny reunite with the boy praising him for making their plan work. 
Basho explains how they disguised themselves and bypassed security while the boy distracted the van der Kois. However, the boy can't understand Benny's words, imagining the weirdest scenarios instead. Meanwhile, Melanie orders Gideon to clean up the mess, but he refuses. As he tries to walk away, Melanie threatens to shoot him. Basho then asks the boy to take down the van der Kooi soldiers, preparing to confront Captain Frostington. The boy defeats Frostington easily, but as he gets distracted looking at Mino, Melanie tries to shoot him. Then he shields the boy and takes the bullet, sacrificing himself to save his friend. Basho tries to reload his gun, but Melanie finds it and shoots him too. Seeing this, the boy rushes at Melanie and catches her. Regaining her senses, Melanie provokes the boy to kill her on camera, hoping to become a martyr. The boy obliges, killing her with the camera hooks. He then reunites with Basu, who is injured but insists on fulfilling his promise to lead the boy to Hilda. As they enter the mansion, the boy encounters numerous soldiers. He kills them all, recalling the day Hilda killed his family. After the fight, he finds Basho dead. Moving forward, the boy finds Gideon lying injured. Gideon explains how Melanie shot him and gives the boy a pass guard to the bunker where Hilda is hiding. Despite this help, the boy prepares to kill Gideon, but Mina stops him. Angrily, the boy tells her he doesn't need her and kills Gideon before continuing entering the elevator. Hilda warns the boy of soldiers ready to kill him claiming his death will be in vain. The boy shows her drawings of Mina, shaking Hilda who disconnects. Reaching the lower floor, the boy is stunned to see soldiers welcoming him. June leads him to Hilda, where he learns the shocking truth. The boy is a van der Kooi, Hilda's son. He recalls memories with Hilda, realizing Shaman had replaced Hilda with his wife in his mind. Hilda helps the boy remember the day he believed his family was killed. As she approaches, the boy recalls being a prince and sees the family before him as Shaman and his kin. Hilda reveals that Shaman killed the boy's father and made the boy kill his own family. The Shaman had begged for mercy, but Hilda made the boy shoot everyone except the Shaman. Seeing Shaman in pain, the boy started shooting wildly, allowing the Shaman to escape. In the aftermath, the boy found himself in the jungle where Shaman found him. Instead of killing the boy, Shaman used him to assassinate his mother. Hilda demands that the boy reveal Shaman's location, but the boy remains silent. Suddenly, June reveals herself as Mina, crying as she looks at her brother. Hilda then orders Mina to finish the boy, claiming he's not her son but a weapon shaped by Shaman to kill them. In the elevator, Mina tells her brother she never stopped looking for him despite being told about his death. Just as they're about to leave, they encounter Shaman. The boy asks him to let them go, but Shaman demands Mina's death. Mina attacks Shaman while the boy watches. Eventually, the boy gains the upper hand and prepares to stab the Shaman, but he resists. Despite the boy's efforts, he fails. Suddenly, his younger version appears, helping him defeat Shaman. The boy then turns to Mina, who asks him to walk away as she's badly injured, but the boy refuses, promising to take her to their magical world. They leave the mansion and the boy declares they're free now with no one to follow. The scene shifts to their past and Mina asks if the boy is with her. He promises to always be there for her and the movie ends there.